Hey, hello. Just making sure we're recording here, um, which we are. So this is a little video on how to stand out on LinkedIn, um, not look like an idiot or to really get the most out of it in a sense. So I have a little outline here. I'll show you. So what we're going to cover today is why we network, why you should be on LinkedIn. We're going to talk about your profile. We're going to talk about likes. We're going to talk about comments. We're going to talk about shares. We're going to talk about creating content. And the last bit of information, we're going to talk about getting into the direct messages or sending people personal messages. And this is going to be my take on it. Um, and it's kind of what's, what I'm seeing out there, what's working on LinkedIn and what's not. And also, you know, my take on, on it as a, as a tool to develop a network of people. So LinkedIn could change um, their algorithms and some of this stuff won't, um, may not be relevant, but hopefully this is bet more about <clears throat> building relationships, building friendship, building real connections, not just collecting virtual networking business cards on the net and playing to the, to the algorithm game. If you're, if you're playing to the numbers and trying to game the system, um, it's not a, it's not a winning strategy. It's going to, you know, over time, that's just not going to pay off. It's going to turn into a bunch of poor connections that aren't going to be the type that we want to connect with anyways. So with that being said, I'm going to jump into why we network. So a lot of people are like, you know, I don't need a network. I don't do it. I don't care. Um, what's the value in it? Am I just out there being schmoozing and just collecting business cards, trying to meet as many people as I can, or in this case, being online, trying to get followers. And I'm going to say, no, everybody needs to go out there and meet others. If you are doing something, you have an idea and you have an idea you want to share with people. They want to hear about it and you're going to need advocates. You're going to need people to support you. So you just can't sit at home and do nothing. You have to go out there and get your message out there, whether it's you're selling something, you're trying to find a job, you're trying to do all kinds of stuff. Sitting at home is just uh, not a strategy that's going to grow your network. Um, also when you meet people, you're going to learn a bunch of new ideas. You're going to share your ideas. So it's a way of expanding your network. It's expanding the people you run in the circles you're around, expanding the ideas you're used to. You're going to meet people from different backgrounds with different strategies, with different ideas, with different ways of looking at things. And if you just kind of limit yourself to the few people that have the same background as you, the same thoughts as you, the same way of doing it or they're just going to tell you like hey that's that's great love it because they're your, your friends you're not going to really be able to to um share your idea to its full capability and by ideas i'm going to just talk about that could be like i said could be hunting for a job it could be building a business could be developing your career it just could be anything um and lastly when we're building a network we're also really building a community it's not just about what you can do uh, what you can get from somebody else or what you can do for that one person, but it's who you can connect in your group of networks to somebody else in your network and have them um, have a relationship too. So you're actually building a community. When we get to, you know, a few hundred people in our network, it's hard to manage those relationships um, on a detailed level. So having a community, the community takes on a life form of its own and it's sharing that message that you have without necessarily you being involved with every key aspect of it. And you can't get there without networking. So we're going to go talk about why you should be on LinkedIn. So the first thing about LinkedIn is it's business centric. So a lot of people are on here with the whole intent of connecting with other people to talk about business. So right away, it's just like going to a business networking mixer. If you go out to a business networking mixer, you don't walk in and you don't shout out to everybody. Hey, look at me. I'm selling shit. Come and buy what I'm saying. No, you don't do that. You're actually polite. You walk in. You're probably a little nervous and I'll have another post on how to get the most out of in-person networking events. But you're there to meet people. So are the people that are at, at that event. They're there to meet people. So now it's about making a connection with somebody on a, on a more personal level and figuring out a way that you can develop a friendship, for lack of a better description, that can carry on to a conversation that might lead to business. Not today, not tomorrow, but down the road. We're not here to get quick sales. That might happen, but that's not the intent. We're here to get 
detailed, real relationships um, to build and establish. And hopefully you can, you can go in there with the mind of connecting people you meet with other people you know that they can develop their business. When you give first, you're going to grow. So um, the other thing that's awesome about LinkedIn, two things. One, it's not yet paid to play in the sense like Instagram or Facebook are. Facebook and Instagram, you're not going to go viral. You're not going to make a post that goes and gets a million views. It's just not going to happen. On the other hand, LinkedIn still has a lot of capabilities where you can with very few followers go in there and make a post and get a lot of reach so if you have four or five hundred people on Instagram and you post something you might get you know 10 30 people looking at it but on on Instagram if you have 400 people you can easily get four or five hundred on just an easy post or sometimes if you get a lot of engagement up to thousands um, and the, the thing I like the best about LinkedIn is this all connections are equal. You know, if you go on LinkedIn and, or not LinkedIn, sorry, Instagram, you go to your favorite influencer, they have like 600,000 followers and they follow like 43. Like that's fucked up. That's bullshit that people are just all in it to gather and collect what they can. With LinkedIn, your connections, if I have 4,000 connections, I'm connected to 4,000 people. I don't have um, 4,000 people that I'm, that are connected to me that I don't follow. Like everybody, it's, it's an equal thing. So if I'm connected to somebody, they're connected to me. There's no, Hey, you follow me. And then what do I get out of it? So that's, what's really important is that anybody you connect with, they want to have a relationship with you. Whereas if you're just following influencers on other platforms, they don't care what you're up to. It's very much about, like I said, building that personal connection. So We'll go into kind of the whys and the whats and the who's and the hows as we go through this. So I'm going to make the assumption that you have not been living under a rock and you know how to create an Instagram account. If you are oh, sorry, we're on LinkedIn, uh, a LinkedIn account. If you don't go on to Google and Google, how do I set up a LinkedIn account? Pretty simple, but I'll tell you what you want to do. You want to have a good profile picture of your face and a header picture. It doesn't have to be of you. It could be of something related to your business, but um, two things, you, you want to have a picture. Uh, any picture is better than no picture and a picture that kind of showcases your um, personality is important. I prefer, and me personally, I have one, it's a face picture um, and it's up close and it shows I'm smiling. So it, it kind of gives this warmth, this, um, inviting appeal that people want to do so you want to be smiling but you don't have to you can you can share your creativity and how a lot of people post like a traditional headshot where your chest up and you got a backdrop of you know some drapery and then you're wearing a suit and tie that's that's not happening anymore these days this is a chance to be a little bit fun you don't have to um just showcase this stuffy picture you want to express a bit of personality that's what makes linkedin great it used to be this post your resume, talk to recruiters, maybe somebody do a Forbes reshare, but nothing was going on. That's changed a lot. Um, I've noticed it changed a lot in the last three or four months. So it's a chance to showcase some personality, especially in your posts. Um, and then in here, you, you wanna put a little bit of maybe why people wanna connect with you. I use my LinkedIn for my um, day, day job or my real job, my, um, my title is Vice President of Purchasing Construction. So I use it to network with a lot of people in the building and materials industry. So that right there tells me that if, the, if they wanna connect with me, a lot of people know that I'm a decision maker. And so if they wanna reach out, that they know they're contacting the right person. And then this about stuff just kinda of has a bit of your, of your you, could, you could have it be resume specific or it could be a little bit more fun. And I'll show you some examples as we go through. It doesn't have to be like this. So that right there was my profile. This is your profile page and what it looks like to the world. Um, you can figure out all that stuff that's going on without it. So this is your feed. Um, I'm going to update the feed. So we're still talking about profiles. So we'll just kind of go down here. So Courtney Johnson is somebody I'm connected with. Uh, she's got a nice uh, friendly face. Um, she's talking about what she's doing, helping individuals and brands generate results. So you kind of get an idea of what she's up to. So you might want to connect with her if that's something that you're in. Glenn, um, or Christian Glenn Cook Johnson. So this is a funny story. He, he, he goes by the, the name Christian, that's his middle name. Um, and Glenn is on his passport and he signs up for all this stuff. And he didn't realize that Facebook, sorry, I keep always messing up the, the um, platform. LinkedIn, um, 
he went viral on LinkedIn and then he had to come claim that his real, his real name is not, he doesn't go by Glenn, he goes by Christian. So funny story there. Um, again, talks about what he does. It's very professional, freelance graphic designer. It's not telling you that you're, um, you know, the world's strongest man, you can chug beers. Like that's not that important. People are talking about it is. This one's a bit more traditional. It's a bit more stuffy. From the picture, it's hard to see what he looks like. Um, it's too far back. Again, he's wearing a, t a suit and, a, and, a, and a, um, a shirt, but he's a COO of Alliance. So this is a pretty um, big company. And, you know, he's, he's portraying the image that he wants to portray. I just say have the, have the picture a little bit more up close so you can see what's going on and see what, who he is a little bit closer. Um, so that's kind of it with uh, people's pictures on LinkedIn. They're, you know, sometimes people have uh, like Jerry here talking uh, on stage, shows what he's up to. So that's really it for profiles. Now, the next thing I'm gonna go into is liking someone's content. Um, the important thing about liking someone's content is it means a lot to the creators it, that they know you're paying attention. So this has happened to me, this happened to a lot of people. You're posting stuff, you're posting good information and you get like 30 or 40 likes, which is, it's good, but it's not that great. And you kind of get a little frustrated, like, Hey, I put in a lot of effort into this. I, I don't think anybody's paying attention. I don't think anybody's looking at it. Um, what's, what's the point of my doing this? And then, you know, lo and behold, you bump into somebody at a coffee shop and they said, Hey, I really love the stuff you're posting on LinkedIn. And you're like, well, I didn't know you were liking my stuff. I didn't know you were seeing my stuff. I had no clue. So um, when you like somebody's stuff, it helps you know, it lets the person that created it know that, hey, you like what they're doing and it's encouraging them to do more. So we're here to support everybody we're connected. I try to like, um, if anything's good, decent, I like it. Um, if Unless I just you know completely disagree, I try to try to support that. Here's something that's really cool of why it's important you want to like somebody's feed. So when you're on LinkedIn, the whole thing here is you want to make good connections. And the way you get somebody interested in what you're doing is not to bombard them with your sales pitch, but to get them uh, intrigued on who you are, checking out your profile, and get them to ask, hey, what are you up to? So this is where the tricks come in. When you like somebody's content, it gets activity in your feed. So what I mean by that, I'm gonna go back to my profile and I'm gonna go to my activity. And I'm gonna go to posts, wait. Sorry, I usually look at this on my um, phone. And it's a little different uh, here. So I'm gonna go to a post I made um, on Friday. So if you were on Heather's group, um, oops, I did that wrong. If you're in Heather's Parody's uh, Unconventional Leaders group, you know I posted this post and said, hey, come check this out. And part of this was to show you what, what could happen. So I'm gonna view the post. How do we view the post? to see sorry about this I like I said I usually do this on my phone <laughs> hold on I'm gonna pause this real quick sorry on pause okay I'm back. Sorry about that. This is the area we want to push is notifications. So when you like somebody's content, they show up in their notifications. So if you posted something and I liked it and you go to your notifications, you're going to see my picture in your notification feed. Why is that important? Let's say you're trying to build that mystique, that intrigue, getting somebody to go visit your profile and see what you're about. When you like something, people go, hey, who is this person? They're starting to show up in the feed. So if you do that um, a couple times, you start uh, getting noticed. It's all going to kind of come together in this snowball effect. So this is like the first thing you can do, especially if you're new to LinkedIn, you're not used to networking, you're not used to 
DMing people or connecting with people and you're a little bit nervous, you're a little bit shy, how can you easily start to make connections? One, with the likes. People are gonna start seeing your likes and a lot of times when they see you, you like their stuff, they're gonna click on your profile and they're gonna connect with you. So that's number one. Just because they viewed your profile, they might not connect with you, but now you've seen that they've shown interest. So that's an, I think if that's an invitation to go onto their profile and ask them to connect. There's most people here are looking to connect just like they're looking to meet somebody at a networking event. You just have to be polite. You just want to say hello. You just want to have like, Hey, how's it going? Where you come from type of conversation that gets the conversation going. It's not all about making a sales pitch or blasting with a message that says, Hey, I'm here to sell you a bunch of shit you thought you needed and Truth is, they didn't do any research on you. We're going to get to DMs in a bit. Um, so the next thing you can do that's easy to do is when you're doing the likes, you like someone's content. A great other one to do is you go into the comment section. Now, the comment section, I believe that's where you want to live. That's where the, the connections, that's where the talking's going to go. That's where there's like this, hey, there's an initial conversation started, which leads to a reason why you could visit their profile, which is a reason why you can connect with them, which is a reason why you're going to continue a conversation. It's constantly just getting, hey, I've seen this person around a few times. I'm starting to chat with them. They're kind of cool. Let's talk a little bit more. And maybe it leads to a conversation more about what everybody's up to. So if you go into somebody's comments, so let's go into Courtney's comments. Right here, um, so she's saying, I'm really impressed by this Nike campaign. It makes me stop and smile and gives me hope every time I see it, blah, blah, blah. People are commenting, absolutely love this one. Me too. Great message. Agreed. Um, I'm going to load more comments. So very clever, Nike. So I'm not, I'm not connected with Jared Best Mitchell, but he's a second. So second means I'm not connected, which means he's connected to somebody I'm connected to. Um, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna show you a good example. So what we can do is we can like his message. Um, whoops, that shows who liked it. So we can hit the thumbs up, we can like it. David Paul's another one, I can like it. And um, maybe we go scroll down and we got this one here, bunch of comments. That's not really a post I'm that jazzed about. Um, So you get kind of the point. Again, I'm gonna go back into the notifications. Luke Matthews liked my comment. So that's what shows up in that person's feed. So now, two things have happened. Sorry, this thing keeps pulling up. If I like Courtney's article, boom, I'm in hers. If I like David Paul's comment about it, now I'm in his. So right there, two clicks, I'm into two people's notifications. Both people are gonna start seeing one. Courtney's gonna see how it's supporting her, supporting her content. So hopefully, you know, my com content will show up in her feed and she'll engage on it too. And maybe there'll be a conversation and we'll have um, a chance to connect about what we're up to. Maybe there's a business opportunity between the two of us, but most, more than likely, there's probably somebody in her network and somebody in my network that we need to connect the two together. Um, and we get there through communication. So the likes, easy. Liking likes is another one. Um, so now we're going to get into the comments section. So like I said, the comments portion is where you want to stand out. That's where you want to live. If, you, if you're in the comments section, going through your feed constantly and commenting on people's stuff, what's going to happen? You're going to show up in their notifications and they're, if they're here to play, they're going to engage you back. They're either going to like your comment back or they're going to comment back on your comment. So we can have a little bit of back and forth. Why does this all matter? I'll show you in a minute. So we're going to find um, somebody's pro comment or uh, post that's got a bit of engagement on it already. Um, so we're scrolling through. I've seen this picture a bunch. We're going to like it because it's a good one. Um, <laughs> that's, this is pretty funny. Okay. 
So as you can see, as you're scrolling through this, you know, we're gonna get to like what you should post for content. But as you can see in my feed, some of it's business, some of it's been kind of funny, some of it's kind of um, relative to other things. But I think this one's kind of a funny joke. The new graphics, uh, the new logo for the Olympics, is going to be this social distancing joke. So it's kind of funny because it's raising awareness for social distance, but it's funny. So we're going to comment on it. So I'm I'm not connected to Daniel Abrams, Abrahams, um, but because I'm connected to Francis Boudreau, uh, his his he showed up on my feed. So another reason why you, why you comment on people's stuff is you'll start showing up in second second connection, second level tier. Uh, people's feed. So anytime you're being active, somebody else that you're not connected with is going to see you. So it's another, again, it's another chance for you to be seen. Um, you're getting people intrigued on who is this person that's posting stuff. I want to check out their profile and I want to connect to them. So I'm going to say something, you know, kind of relevant to it. Maybe I'll ask a question. Do you think they will have they will still have the games. So I've commented that it's it's funny, because it is funny, but it's also not just like, hey, hey, ha, oh, this is just kind of this dumb comment that there's nothing to engage back to. So I've asked a question. So that's kind of cool. So we've asked it. Now I'm gonna show up in his feed. And again, if I have a comment on something, go like some people, it actually helps you stand out. Um, so I'm going to go to my profile post from um, yesterday. Actually, it's Friday. So we're going to go back to, go to my profile, and then I'm going to go to my activity. There's probably faster ways to get around. I'm not super tech savvy with things, so I'm going to go to my posts. So this was the post I was talking about where we had an icebreaker game. So. As you can see, I got a lot of likes, a lot of comments, but I got 6,000 views of my post. So that's a ton of views compared to some of my other stuff where there's not as many likes and not as many engagements, 584. So this post did really, really well for me. We'll get into the, all the tricks and stuff of why this kind of worked out in a moment. Um, so again, I, I got comments from people. Um, and I responded back to them. So it's important that you're in the comment section. So when people are here, they're chatting with me, I'm chatting with them. Now, if Nathaniel DM'd me or something like that, I've had a little bit of banter with him, I might engage him in a DM con in a DM message. Now, if he kind of blows it and just shoots me with his sales pitch off the bat, I'm probably gonna blow it off and not reply. But it's really about developing um, relationships. So Chris Redinger, He's a guy that I actually know from um, the industry. I've met him in person a bunch of times. So we haven't done any business with Sun Street Solar yet, but he knows that there's there's a the, in the future the company I work for is going to need to buy solar. So he's playing this game of building a network, building a relationship, and he's he's engaging on my posts. He's not trying to sell me something. He's just like, hey. I'm paying attention and we're kind of building a little banter, a little friendship. So then when we see each other in person, we've already connected, we already relate, and it's not sitting across the table from adversaries. It's, it's people that know each other and, and relate to each other, we can chat. So again, we always comment back on our comments. And also when you comment on people's stuff and they comment back, then that shows you that they're the type of people that are engaging and they're the people you want to connect with. If you're commenting on people's posts and they don't respond back and they don't uh, engage you back, then either they got like way too many comments and way too many likes and too many followers that they don't have time to get to you. So they're probably not going to be doing business with you anyways. They're not going to offer a lot of value to be with. So try to stay away from those. And then people who just post stuff to post stuff and don't engage, again, they're very, con I would say they're more concerned about themselves than with, um, getting connected with other people. So we're here to build real relationships, not collect business cards, not collect contacts, not collect connections, but make real connections. And that's how it's at. So get in the comments. All you can say is that's, that's the number two easiest way to get seen if you're not ready to do um, shares and you're not ready to do posts and you're not ready to create your own content. Likes and comments, then get into the comments section. Like the likes, like the comments, and then comment, and then comment on the comments. You don't have to comment on your own um, 
comments, you can go comment on someone else's comments. That happens all the time. Let me see if I can see. So um, Leah Turner, she commented on my post and Richard Powers, who I'm not connected with, he commented back on hers. And then I commented back on him that I've acknowledged it. So this right here is how, um, you know, introductions virtually can happen is you're seeing people show up in your feed that you're maybe not connected with. There's also 13 likes. I'm going to guess most of these likes came from people Leah's connected with that are liking her, her comments because they're following her. But that's also means that my post is getting seen. So that's why we want to comment on the comments, like the comments, like the post, all that stuff. That's the simplest, easiest way to, to do this. You can do this in five minutes. You can, you know, like five to 10 posts in about a minute. You can comment on three or four posts in about two or three minutes. You can like a couple comments on those posts you commented on in a few seconds. It's very easy and it has just this huge reach and it like snowballs. The more comments, the more likes, the more people's posts get seen and the more you start showing up in all those people's feeds. And that's really what we want. We want, we want to be this person, this person, this person, this person. We want to be that person in other people's feeds. So they go, who is this person that's commenting on my posts? Who is commenting on my comments? And why are they so insightful? Why are they bringing so much value? I want to check them out. I want to meet them. Get into that. So next thing you can do, not quite ready to create your own content. I get it. We're a little shy. We get a little worried of putting ourselves out there. Shares. Shares are an easy way to do this. Very similar to likes. It tells the creator that Hey, you like their content, you think it's good stuff, and others want to hear it. Um, shares also work like introducing your connections to someone else at a cocktail party. You know, one of the things I like to say is if two people are chatting and they're having a good time and you bring a third person in, all of a sudden it looks like you guys are the rock stars at the party because why are so many people wanting to be around you talking to you? What's going on over there? So when you can even if you don't know the other person, you just met this person, they're walking by, grab somebody and says, hey, do you know my new friend, Tim? Tim's awesome, you should meet him. And then they're gonna introduce and they're gonna shake. And it's a way to get people connected with everybody. Remember, most of the people here are here to meet people. So don't be afraid to say hello. Sharing somebody's content, content is a pretty awesome way to do it. People love to have their posts shared. It, it's like almost like, hey, you really, really like me. That's why you wanna do it. Um, so how to effectively do it? Um, the way I like to do it is we'll go back to my feed. Let's find something of value. Um, maybe somebody's comment on something. Uh, da, 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 da. So I'm going through, I'm looking for somebody that I'm connected with. Um, that I'm believing in this task too. Hold on, I'm gonna search somebody I know that always posts really good stuff. There you got the right one. It's a couple of Ryan Millers there. So Ryan Miller's a guy I know, he's awesome. He's a coach um, doing good stuff. We always post like really fabulous content. And I know I've seen some good stuff from him recently. So I'm going to go to his activity. I'm going to find his posts. Um, so he's always talking about very positive things. He's always talking about changing the world. So I'm just going to share his stuff because I think world could can always use a little more positivity I can't spell positivity positivity how come that's not correcting Hey, that's so positive. How do you spell positive?
sometimes it doesn't work. Well, Google says that's how you spell it. Um, so if you hit the at sign, you can tag them. So I'm going to tag Ryan. Always shines a bright light. These posts is no different. So usually what I do when I'm sharing a post is comment a little bit on it, talk about what um, I like about it, and then reshare it. So I'm gonna hit that in, and that's the easy way to do it. Um, so now Ryan's gonna see that I shared his post. It's gonna get him a few more looks. I'm also gonna like it because I liked it, and then I would comment on it because like I said, we're gonna like and we're gonna comment. And we don't want to just say the same thing too when we share a comment or we share a like. We want to kind of mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to add that. And Duke, I'm going to give him a like and I'm going to give Ryan a like because we are supporting everybody. All that comes together. Um, so really sharing content helps you get a little bit of practice of writing a little bit of content that you're not really responsible for the whole post. Somebody else has created it. You're just sharing it and you're putting your little take on it. So it's a good way to practice uh, sharing content. Now, the next part is, is creating content. Um, first thing is don't worry about what you create. Just try to do something that talks about you. What works for you, what you do, what you're an expert in. So if you're posting, I would suggest you post somewhere between um, four to eight times a day. That's a lot, I know, but here's the thing. LinkedIn shows people that are interested in you your feed, and the people that aren't interested in you aren't gonna see it, so you can't overshare. You're going to, people that are engaging in you wanna see your stuff, so if you can do it four to eight times a day, that's gonna be great. Most people are gonna only see one or two posts, they're gonna miss a bunch of it, um, and they're not gonna see it. Then that goes across all social media aspects, but, Four to eight. I would do one to two detailed posts, um, meaning you put a little thought behind it, kind of like Ryan's here. It's a little bit of a positive statement, what he's up to for the day, what he's taking on. And then four to six Twitter type posts. Like what I say to those are they're they're in the moment, what you're thinking about. Maybe you just left a a meeting or you had a good sales coaching call you could just say hey I'm really fired up uh, uh, about my last coaching call and we talked about the power of positivity and I'm going to go change the world like boom like it's two quick sentences and you're hitting it and you're posting right now I think um, text only posts are probably getting the most engagement followed by photos followed by videos um, some people I don't know it probably depends on who's following you with the what the people like to see, but I get a lot more um, in engagement when it's just a text only or a text only with the, some boat, or I guess that would be text only, but a good caption, like a long piece uh, with a photo like this. It's a, it's, a, it's a bright photo, it's smiling, it's a positive thing, people are liking it, and then there's a good caption on it. Um, those ones get a lot of looks. The videos, you know, like anything, videos take time to, to, to watch. So anything over two minutes is probably too long. Um, that's, that wants to be on a different platform. Um, a lot of times people are scrolling. So I like to do a two minute video and I like to do an auto caption. So that way people can read it. That's just me. I like to, it's funny because I like to converse in, in, te, in like a, like a recorded medium because I just can't put my thoughts into paper in a fluid way, but I feel like if I'm speaking it, I can get out what I wanna say a lot better, but I hate listening because it takes so much longer to listen to something. I'd rather get, if you send me a voicemail, I wanna see it transcribed. I don't wanna to listen to a 30 second, 45 second, minute and a half voicemail. Like I saw who called, I know, what to, I know to call you back. I'll call you back. If there's a topic you wanna to just say, send it in a text, like take two seconds, like don't take 30, don't take 45. But that's how I do it as I, as I would rather audio provide it. Um, so now when we're creating content, what we can do is talk about 
what we're an expert in. We can make it relevant to our business. Um, we could tell who you work for. So you might be talking about what your company has going on. They could be anything um, that you feel is appropriate. Now, LinkedIn is a bit more conservative platform. It's not like Facebook. We don't see a lot of people engaging with um, polarizing political views or like wild and crazy stuff. It's not a lot of, you know, if you're posting bikini pictures or shirtless fitness stuff, that's probably not the right way to go about things. Um, it's, it's a bit more professional, but that doesn't mean you can't have personality and show who you are. This isn't just a stuffy old place. You can still be fun. You can still be engaging and you can show that you're not just, um, one one facet you're not just one person there's many sides to you so a lot of times when you're connecting with people and you just always talk about business 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 but somebody doesn't know you have an affinity for coaching little league sometimes people that follow you find out like oh you coach little league i coach little league and now there's this bond that's um there's able to connect upon that's not business related now you're meeting on like more of a friendly level on on terms that are easier to connect about, you're easier, easier to relate to. Um, it shows that you're human, that you're not just this stuffy business person. So that's why I think you wanna showcase um, a lot of your personality. Now, that means the difference is, is like if you're on Facebook and you coach Little League, you might show like pictures of your kids playing Little League. You might show like the after um, pizza party, that type of stuff. Probably not gonna go over great on LinkedIn, but what would go is like, you know, the like a picture of you coaching the kids uh rallying them up or something like that and talking about it what you're doing and the why behind it and not really about like showcasing um all the ins and outs of your day-to-day -day lives just my opinion i just think you'll be better off keeping that on facebook um consistently posting is also important um the more you do it the better you're going to be the more, the more you do it, the more people are going to see it. The more you do it, the more you're going to share about yourself, the more people can relate to you. So remember, keep doing it over and over again. Show up every day, Monday through Friday at the minimum, do two posts a day. That's what you have to do at the minimum. Some people post on the weekends. Some people post multiple times, uh, more than that, two times. Um, like I said, most people aren't going to probably see your stuff. So if you're in the moment and you feel like it on Saturday, do it. But it, it's, it's kind of slows down a little bit on the weekends. But again, we're not playing the algorithm game. We're not trying to find the best time to post. You just post and people will see it. The cool thing about LinkedIn is not everybody comes on every single day. Some people come in two or three times a week. And the good thing about it is your feed still shows up what people are interested in still comes to them. So if you're on Instagram and I post on Monday and you don't log in till Wednesday, there is not a chance in hell you are going to see my post. But if I post on Wednesday on our Monday on LinkedIn on Wednesday, I'm pretty sure you're going to get a view of my post and you'll probably engage. So the, the life cycle of a post on LinkedIn can last a good week, week and a half, depending on how, how valuable it is and how much engagement is going on. Whereas other platforms is kind of like in the moment, in the second, it's gone. Um, what I would say is not to do is do not use your content to blast ads. People don't want to see that. That should be a hard and fast rule. If you're coming off pitchy, if you're coming off salesy, just, just stop. You know the stuff that people post. You're going to go out there and see it. It's going to say like, you know, if you're a realtor, I got my house listed for sale. Like, come buy it. Nobody cares. Like, get that off of there. Um, see if we can find some examples of stuff what not to post so here's the thing see if i can find one um right now linkedin is a bit wild west within it, here's one with the algorithm so a lot of people are posting this thing called um immediately you grow your network here in linkedin on three steps like this post Comment below, you're open to new connections. Send a connection request to everyone that leaves a comment. Everyone is always a valuable connection. This one is 100% playing to the algorithm. It's got 95 comments, 122 engagements. It's got a ton because people are playing this collection game and it's easy to get caught up in the moment and want to jump in, build your community and collect connections because hey, why not? We're gonna get some easy connections. These people want to engage. It's kind of like, hey, everybody's here to grow. 
let's all do it together. But let me tell you why this is just not good. This algorithm is going to change. And if your strategy is building a network based on the algorithm, you're going to fail because the algorithm will change and you're stuck with getting, this is just like the like for likes, the, um, DM groups that people are on on Instagram or follow for follow back, all that stuff that used to go on that just doesn't work anymore on, on the other platforms. This is about, this is just basically it in a nutshell. So you're going to connect with people that are, you know, they're on LinkedIn, they're trying to grow their stuff. They're going to play the game of commenting and liking and engaging with you, but they're probably not going to be of value to you as a connection in the long term because they're, they're just in it to grow themselves and you're in it to grow on a different level. So they might be good, they might work out. There's probably a lot of great people in here that are gonna provide a lot of value because everybody's doing it, and everybody's running with it. But if your posts are just this, you're just not gonna build a following. So you wanna focus on your voice first. Work on your message. Um, there's a saying by um, T.D. Jakes, he's, he's talking about you wanna have a big message for a small audience. And when you can master your message, that's when your audience will grow. That's when your audience will find value. So focus your comments on the message and not about collecting, collecting cards. Don't get caught up in this one. Now, this one has a lot of stuff. It's probably if you went to some of his other posts. Um, so we're going to go to some others. So... You know, his whole feed is just this. So clearly he's not providing a lot of value in his feed. He's, he's collecting, ah, oh, see, I got, no, that's not me. I thought, I, I know, I'll be honest with you, I've gotten caught up in it and I've followed people and I've liked people. So, you know, there's not a lot of value coming out of his, his posts. He's kind of collecting a lot of stuff, um, but I've seen other people do it. There's nothing saying that, um, he's a bad guy or anything like that. I just think his strategy is going to be, um, it's, it's not going to pay off. So with that being said, just because there's algorithms that have worked to your advantage, doesn't mean you can't provide value and take care of it. So we all know what's going on right now with the coronavirus. A lot of people are working from home. A lot of people's work situations are in limbo. Some people aren't working. Everybody's kind of, you know, got a lot going on. So instead of posting like, hey, like, comment, share, what I did is instead, I created a post. So I want to go to my post, sorry. Um, you'll probably find it through here. Okay, here it is. So this is my post from the other day. So we had some, so, so on Thursday, we played a game of like, hey, where are you from? So everybody, um, went on my, on my comment and they commented, you know, where they're from and an interesting fact. That's why I asked them. So I asked a question that was kind of like taking people's mind off of it and engaging of where you're from. So we get a little bit of, Hey, where's everybody from? What's something funny and a little tidbit. So we're kind of getting to know everybody. So we're still playing the algorithm game in a sense, admit it, we, we are, but it's still personal. It's still about building relationships. It's still about getting to know people on a little bit more intimate level. And hopefully the people that are engaged on my posts also engaged with each other a little bit and they made connections in the elsewhere. So the next day, this is where you kind of can go and supercharge your posts. So we talked about what I did yesterday. So we played a little fun game. So I took a game from um, Twitter and I think I've seen it on Facebook is where you post a, a picture of a movie or you put a movie quote up there and you say, what movie is this from? Wrong answers only. We get a little laughs of what people come up with. So I said, hey, how can we make that relevant to LinkedIn? How can we make it relevant to today's um, issues at hand? And in light of everything, people want to you know, not feel stressed out and everything be negative. So he said, hey, what are the best work from home hacks? Um, wrong answers only. So we got a ton of comments um, here of what people came up with. So everybody's thinking creatively and talking funny stuff. People are engaging with each other. People are engaging on my com comments. People are engaging on each other's comments. People are liking it. People are sharing it. We got about 6,000 views. So this is essentially the same way of going about the like, share, comment posts that other people are using to collect networking stuff. Um, but instead, we're getting people that are 
really they want to connect, really they want to engage, and really they want to get to know each other. So it's it's a great way to get to know everybody a little bit better, have a little sense of humor, and then hopefully, you know, the more you engage with um, certain people's posts, the more they start showing up in your feed. And so then your comments and your content, it starts to be in there. Everything kind of has this snowball effect that, that just rolls in. Once again, we're just trying to get people to go, who is this person on this page that keeps showing up in my profile? I'm going to go to them and I'm going to connect with them. So um, one thing I didn't talk about was connecting with somebody. So when you go to connect with somebody, a lot of times they'll have this button here, connect. Um, other times it might say follow. So some people have follow instead of connect. Maybe they just don't want somebody to connect with them right, or, right away. You can have, I think, up to 30,000 connections on LinkedIn before you max out. I don't know what followers are. Um, I don't really play in the followers world other than they're just people like you follow them, but they got too many people to connect with. So you can't connect with them, which I think means you can't send them an instant message. Um, so whatever, we're not really wanting to be in that space anyway. So if I see somebody um, that's interesting, um, they're in the building industry, American building contractor. So that's kind of an interesting thing. They're engaged in the same stuff. They kind of talk to the same people we talk to. Um, a lot of times they'll say like in their connections who they're mutually connected with. So I might go and see you. So BK is a great person. Awesome, awesome friend of mine um, that, that I know well. So if he's friends, I'm going to take it that they're pretty good. Now, where did we go? What just happened? Um, how do we get back? Okay. So I'm going to send him a connection request. So then it's going to, you can add note if you want, send out. So I don't, a lot of times I don't personally connect with that many people I don't know. I accept everybody that asks me to connect unless they're just like look really spammy. And then if they're posting a bunch of spammy stuff, then I'll unconnect with them down the road. But I'll accept everybody and I really don't reach out and connect with anybody unless they're, um, Maybe I've never met them in person, but they're really closely related in the industry somehow. Um, typically what I do is somebody gives me their business card. Um, I add their business card to my contact information, find them on LinkedIn and connect with them that way. Um, other than that, if you, if you want to connect with people and you're just getting started, there's a section here, people you may know. You can go connect with a few people, and then the more people you connect with, the more people it's going to show you who you work with. So that's an easy way to do it is go find the people you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Word will get out, and they'll start, start growing. So that's how you kind of grow your connections and get better at posting. Once, once, I, once you start doing it more and more, it's going to get easier. You can provide interesting content. It doesn't always have to be super businessy and super boring, and we're talking about the boringest stuff about the products we sell, like... You know, you can only tell somebody so many great things about how fantastic your garage doors that you sell are. Like people know, but you can start, you know, providing, you know, insight into the benefits of things or, you know, funny tidbits um, that are related to it or just, you know, your life experience out on the field, um, meeting with people and what you're, you know, passionate and excited about. So the last bit is getting a lot longer than I thought it would be is the DMs or messaging. So this is what your um, messages look like. Um, we are, uh, this is what I say about messaging people. One, don't do it. You're absolutely not ready to message somebody. So stop doing it. You're probably going to blow it anyway. So tell you, until I get to the, the part where you're going to master this method, you're going to do a good job. So don't do it until you're ready. And let me tell you, you're not ready today. Um, if you think shotgun approach is the way to go it with a big long ass message about um, what you do, I'll show you some of these because I get these all the time. Um, just asking somebody if they want your business, that's not gonna work. So if you just bang out a message to everybody every single time, nobody cares. Um, this guy, he sends me this long ass message. I'm not going to read this. I ain't got time to read this and I don't care. And, and after I start reading it, if I do start reading it, it clearly shows that he didn't check out my profile because he would know that this has nothing to do with my role and I'm not the right person to be talking to. So this is just, he, he's already kind of like gotten in the, in the bad zone of spamminess that I just will avoid him because I, you know, it, it just feels spammy. So he's kind of 
ruined his reputation just a little bit. So that's why I say stay out of the DMs. That's the, the quickest way to ruin your reputation. Easiest way to build reputation, likes. Second easiest, comments. Third easiest, shares. And then start doing content. Now you can, you can you know, embarrass yourself by posting dumb stuff or polarizing stuff on, on your content, but most people on LinkedIn are pretty professional and a little bit more um, restrained. They're not off the rails with what they're sharing that's gonna be polarizing, so it's usually pretty good. Um, but the, the DMs is where everybody messes it up. So don't do it. Um, the way I say um, to go about getting the messages going is first, you need to read the book called Digital Persuasion by Aaron Gardner King. It's available on Amazon. It is the book that's gonna describe the PUB method that I'm going to talk about. What the PUB method is, is personal, useful, brief. So what you wanna do, instead of the shotgun approach, you wanna connect with five or 10 people. Um, let's start with five. You wanna find five people in your network that you're not connected with on LinkedIn that would really be interesting for you to meet. And before you do that, I would also suggest practicing these techniques on people that are less, um, less like if you completely blow it, it's not gonna be damning to you. So if you're trying to reach out to your dream client and send them this, this message, um, practice it before you send it to them. Find somebody that like if they blow you off or, you, or if you whiff it, it doesn't really matter. Like you could find somebody like if you're in, California and you find somebody in Florida that um, isn't related to your industry, isn't related to anything you're doing and isn't gonna buy from you, blah, blah, blah. They're just not in your industry. For example, the, the guy I showed you, BK, he sells asphalt roof shingles in the East Coast. He does not sell asphalt shingles in California. So clearly, if he was going to message me, he can't mess it up too bad because I probably wasn't gonna buy anything from him anyways. Even though we're still good friends, we always make a joke that he's, um, he's my favorite vendor that I don't buy anything from and, and I'm his favorite client that I don't buy anything of his from. So anyways, what we do is we make a list of people we want to connect with and then we start trying to find out as much as possible. Since we talked about this on Heather's Facebook group, I'm gonna use hers as an example. So let's say I want to connect with Heather Parody. So I might Google her and voila, I'm already connected with her, but let's pretend I'm not. So I'm looking about her. I see she's an unconventional leaders. I'm kind of going through her profile. I see she went to the University of Central Arkansas. I'm not from Arkansas. I don't know anybody in Arkansas. That's really not anything I have in connection with her, but I'm, I'm looking through things i might see people that i'm connected to there's 41 of people that are mutually connected so i might reach out to somebody that is is personal friends with her and see if i can get to know her a little bit but let's say i don't and i can't find it so i know heather's on here she's on linkedin maybe she's on instagram voila i google her she's on instagram is her profile private or is it public well it's um, well, I'm not logged in, but I do follow Heather, just so you know, we do, we are connected. Um, anyways, so I'm looking through her stuff and, and I see she's podcasting, she has a family, um, she's out and about, she's doing funny things, um, she's kind of, you know, she's not serious, she's kind of fun. So I'm kind of getting this vibe of what her personally is out like, um, so now it wants me to log in. Um, okay, so now I'm logged in. Um, so I'm just kind of scrolling, getting to know. I can see she likes coffee. She likes books. Hmm. Wait, nope, those are journals. She likes journaling. She likes books. Um, oh, a lot of coffee. So we're starting to notice things that are consistent about her. So I know she likes coffee. I know she likes journaling. Um, not quite there with something I'm super in common with her. Um, so I go through her stories. She doesn't have a lot, but let's just say she had this post. She had she before the um, cr uh, the coronavirus. She had post. She would post some stuff where she was at the gym and said mental health. And so right then I go, okay, that's that's where it's at. Mental health is important for her. Gym is like her her spot where she goes to kind of like work out all the you know all the stuff and just kind of like you know that's her that's her spot where it's just like let's just grind it out and have a good time. So. 
I found something that we have in common. We both like going to the gym. So now I want to craft a message using the PUB method, which is personal, useful, and brief. So I'm going to send her a message. And I would say, and this is how you guys are getting to do it. So she's, um, uh, well, I've already messaged her before. So let's just say I hadn't messaged her before. I might say, hey, Heather. Um, I saw you like the gym. And it's closed now. Too bad. I'll say that's hard to get a workout in. Did you know that Peloton is offering the app for free? I signed up for it. Take care, Nate. So it's personal. Why is it personal? Because we connected the, the gym and we have this in relationship. Why is it useful? Because I'm offering her something that she might not know. That the Peloton um, spin bike, which also the app also has a bunch of other gym activities you can do from home, is available for free. Um, I didn't put it for free. I signed up for it. Take care, Nate. So the brief part, that's what lacking. You think this is brief? It's not brief. People are so busy, they only have a short period of time. You wanna keep this down to three sentences or less, and you wanna take out the word I anywhere you can. So I'm gonna tell you why this message sucks, other than I wrote it really quickly and I didn't craft it very good. Hey, Heather, don't need that. Boom. Why do I not need that? Because this is like a text message. She knows who she is and I'm sending her a message. She doesn't need to be, hey, Heather. Now all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, here comes a spam message. So the other thing is we want to eliminate the word I. Um, so it says, I saw you like the gym and it's closed. Yeah, she knows the gyms. She likes the gym and it's closed. And now it's gonna be hard to get a workout in. So that this could be combined. Um, into one sentence and a lot quicker. So, so I might say, gym closed, what now for hashtag mental health? So now she knows that I've been, you know, following her on, on her Instagram and I'm, I'm curious about what she's about. I'm, I'm creating that intrigue. I want her to go check out my profile, but you notice how I didn't mention anything about what I do, what I can offer. That stuff's not going to come. We're never, ever, ever going to bring that up in a direct message unless the other person asks for that. So the gym's closed. What now for mental health? So we don't need to put this in here because we can assume that she does it. And if she does, she'll tell us. So I'll say Peloton is now offering the app for free. I'm gonna make it easier for her. So I'm going to get a link for it. Uh, so I'm gonna give her the link so she has it. I'm gonna put great stuff, not everything. Running yoga too, not just bike rides. So that's just in case she doesn't have the bike at home. She might be saying, well, I don't have the bike. I can't get the app. But I've clearly said running yoga too are available. So she knows now that there's other things we can do. So this was a direct message, it's very short to the point. I didn't use the word I in it at all. It is one, two, the link, three sentences, complete in there. So now if I send this off to her, which I will, so maybe she'll, um, um, She'll probably be going, what the fuck is this message for? But anyways, maybe she'll watch this video and um, and, and get the idea. Um, 
of why the message is, is powerful. Maybe we get our feedback on if it was important or not. So that's what it is and why we DM and how you DM it. Personally useful brief. Again, Grab the Book by Aaron Gargan is just the best book out there for showing you how to do this. And it's also why it's important to practice it, practice it, practice it with people that aren't going to make a big mistake if you blow it up. Um, and then, then use it on the people you really want to connect with. What this also does is it makes it more of a personal connection, a more relatable connection, and not just, hey, hitting them with the spam, hitting them with something that's too long to read. It's really approaching it to them because we've made it about you. And people get tons and tons of messages. They don't have a lot of time to reply to everything. So we want to keep it short, keep it brief, and get after it. Now, not saying everybody's going to respond to, to the message we send, but I think you'll find that your um, reply rate is significantly better and then you'll start engaging in a conversation. So you can take the conversation for what it is. Maybe somebody looks at my profile and asks me a question about what I do and that that's an opening to talk about what I do or it might result in um, a little conversation back and forth. You might say something like, I already have the Peloton. Like, you have the Peloton, I have the Peloton. Are you in this Facebook group that everybody's on and we kind of chat about this and then, you know, this, <clears throat> this relationship starts blossoming and you're able to have a back and forth over the course of many months and that might lead into connecting and talking about business in the future and stuff like that. So don't get all caught up in the I got to make a connection every day. So if you can make four or five of those emails every day instead of four or five hundred of those that just go nowhere, you're going to get much better connections. It's going to take more time to do it, but I think your response rate is going to be a bit better. So that is my long, long video of how to make the most out of LinkedIn, or as I've been calling it, how to stand out on LinkedIn without looking like a jackass. If you like this video, please comment, share, talk about it. Tell me what you didn't like, if you didn't like it. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. My DMs are open specifically on this. If you watch this, um, I'd be happy to um, tell you more, explain more and more detail. I'll probably um, barely scratch the surface, but I can tell you 100% if you just consistently show up and not look like a jerk, not try to be me, 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 me. Remember, you don't walk into a coffee shop and go, look at me, I sell stuff. Like, come buy it. Like, nobody does that. But what you do do is you come in and you say, hi, I'm so-and-so, and, you know, this is maybe where I'm from. This is what I like to do. And friendships take on their own uh, way of, of developing. Just be patient. These things are good. So consistently show up and uh, get plugged in, get involved. You're going to see a lot of growth. LinkedIn, is, to me, if you're doing business, that is where it's at. It's not on Facebook. It's not on Instagram. It's on LinkedIn. That's where you can grow. And if you're creating good content on LinkedIn, you can easily take this content and re repurpose it just with slight tweaks over there on, on um, your other social media platforms. So with that, I'm going to end this video and um, take care.